Hello, everyone. Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf, and with me always is Sal. How's it going, everybody? I'm happy to be here. He's happy to be here. Happy As always. Yeah, well, man. he's always happy. I don't know about all that, but this show, we, this is fun. This is this is great stuff. I'll, I'll tell you, you know? how happy he is. He was so happy that he, uh, it took me forever to get him to get started. He kept talking about weightlifting. Yeah. That was well, his, I thought we were going to do the show about weightlifting. Yeah. Anthony was over here we could getting, get, getting mad or whatever because of. There we go. We could, You know, we got to, you know. We're weightlifting. Quit with don't don't lift that weight, brother. <laughs> okay. Well, because because I I had told him before the show that I've lost ninety two pounds now. Awesome. And so man. he was like, "Wow, that's that's great." And Big then, stuff. Uh, yeah. We started talking about working out because people don't realize that lifting weights will help you lose fat. Yeah. Well, believe me, I know. I just did it. Right. And you and don't I have... didn't do a bunch of cardio. I lifted weights and I ate healthy. That's how I yeah. did it. I didn't. Yeah. People were like, I got to go get on a treadmill and run to, from here to Ohio. No, you don't. Which it's you only to, yeah. it's only going to be good. To a certain point, and it's not as well, as much as you people only think. you only. I've had the, the science behind it now. I've had a yeah. lot of trainers that are switching gears, and they've said that doing a lot of cardio releases free radicals, yeah. and it enlarges your heart. When you're overweight, really big overweight, mm-hmm. people make that mistake. They go and do a bunch of cardio, and right. their heart enlarges. Got so it. what ends up happening is that when they when they die still young anyway because of the you know. But what happens, you know, like like when you do a bunch of cardio, it ages you because of the free radicals. Yeah. And ladies, they they think that the answer to, uh, to to getting in shape is to go and get on a treadmill, mm-hmm. and that's not the answer. I can tell you right now, you can supplement your weightlifting with cardio, which yeah. is what I do. I walk a lot and I do a lot of stuff, but that is only minimal. And and when you lift weights, you burn fat with 50, up to fifteen percent when you're not when you're not lifting for days. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't happen with cardio. All that does is you burn, you know, a, a weight right while you're doing it, and then afterwards you're not. That doesn't do it. Yeah. And, and and the other thing too is is, you know, many people get into that misconception about oh, if I start lifting weights, I'm going to get all buff, and that's not what I'm yeah. trying to do. You know how hard that is to do that. That's, <laughs> I've seen people lift for years and yeah. they couldn't gain muscle. You either got it or you don't. I right. mean, that's just all there is to it. I've seen and women always do that. When women lift weights, you you end up, ladies, you end up looking really good. You get really toned and you look sexy. It doesn't make you big, okay? Doesn't make you, you're not yeah. gonna have the testosterone. You're not gonna to get do like that. the Incredible Hulk or anything. Yeah, like unless that. you're taking juice or something. Then, yeah, and, you and, know, then you get big. But and you know. overloading on protein because you're trying to build the muscles. Yeah, if, well, even that's not. I, you know, I know women who've worked out really hard and drank, ate protein and they didn't get big. No, I mean, no, it's hard no. to get big for a woman. But for a woman, that's just a misconception, though, right? Like you yeah, said, yeah. For a lady, ladies. You know, get some weight training in there because that'll help you shape up your arms. You'll and... be shapely. Yes, yes. And and <laughs> you notice the the best looking people in the gym are the weightlifters. The people you know, on the treadmill, they look terrible. Well, so some usually... of them they look very thin and, yeah. and not good, or they look very fat. I mean, that that's what I've noticed. The, the people in shape look to, they lift weights or they do both. Yeah, they do. I, the I, I'd recommend doing both. Yeah. I swim. You yeah, know, too. Definitely. But I would definitely recommend doing a lot of uh, weights because that will burn the fat quicker and eating healthy. That's what you got to do. That's yeah. just, that's the magic. Eating formula. healthy. Yeah. Not really magic, but No, it's 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 common sense. Yeah. You but know. anyway, that's your that's your weight and health tip for the day with from Wolf. We don't Sal. we don't claim to be experts, but we're only telling you what's worked for us. I do. Us. I, I'm an absolute expert. I know what works. <laughs> do it or you'll be thrown in the gulag. Yes. I know nothing. Yeah. Well, you that, go that, to gulag. That, the gulag is Russian <laughs> and then not German. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to tell you the emails doswolfman88 at gmail.com, doswolfman88 at gmail.com, and Wolf and Sal at gmail.com, guys. Hey, Wolf and Sal give, us, give us your stuff. We're getting to them as fast as we can. God, we've had a lot of responses from you guys. Thank oh, you yes. so much for the stories and everything else. And, you know we can only get so we can only get to them as fast as we can, and we're trying to get faster. So please bear with us. We want to hear your story. We want to tell it. A lot or, of people we've talked to, yeah. And I've asked you to compart- compartmentalize your emails uh, when you have multiple different types of encounters. Try to compartmentalize them for us. Like, yeah, if you have a ghost story, send the ghost stories, and then we can put it in a folder, and then send, send the werewolf story, or whatever you got, whatever's happened to you, yeah. And then we'll compartmentalize it. Yeah, because that category. helps us. Because yeah. if you just send me five encounters of different things then i it kind of runs together and it's kind of hard for us to you know and so it just send it send it separate emails each encounter a separate email that would help that would yeah. actually help yeah you guys but it's it's like i said we've gotten some fantastic stories you know in cover you know from this uh topic that we're going to cover today we've gotten quite a bit of you know feedback from people and 
we're still sifting through a lot of emails, but we have come across a few that have told us stories about werewolves. And I thought that was really interesting. Well, we're not doing werewolves. No? No, we've already we've already done. We're, we're talking about. Alter, well, I'm alter. sorry, man. I, I got werewolf on the brain. I love those stories. That's why I keep well, talking about we're, them. Because the reason he's talking about that, folks, I'm going to leave this on. I'm not going to edit your bull crap out. Oh, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to just tell you right now. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now because we have interviewed uh, a, a lady, yeah, uh, from Arizona who had some crazy stuff happen on her property. And what's really crazy is like some of the stuff that she's talked about coincided with some witnesses that we had talked to in Texas. And so we're going like, oh, my gosh, this woman's not. And bold. these this is, two. This is real. Yeah. And these two people do not know, do not each, know other. each other. And they're miles away. And, and these you know, facts. They, she that knew we things got. that yeah. we had never spoken about in that investigation. Yeah. And then we're going to interview uh, today. We're actually doing another interview of a woman from Tennessee who's got. Yeah. Bunch of, uh, we're going to have them on stuff. the show. Yeah. But yeah, that's why he's got werewolf on the brain. But what we're talking about now is alternate realities. Hey, in, in an alternate reality. The dogmen are werewolves. And in alternate reality, we yeah. were going to do werewolves. Awesome. And there I'm you go. I'm the one that said alternate reality. Yeah, we just and, split this timeline. And we were wrong. I was wrong. But oh, in this reality, you're always wrong. But, you know, there's, right. there's an alternate reality. So if we where, were in the other reality, then that means I would be right and you'd be wrong. <laughs> that never happens in this one. Well, I know. Thank goodness. We're in this one. <laughs> Okay, uh, folks, we're gonna jump right into this, dude. I know we're talking about fitness and all this other stuff. Uh, we're coming at you down with alternate realities. Now, what happened uh, was I was at at the office the other day. My work, I have a two businesses now, and one of them, I, I was at the office, and we started talking about alternate realities. And so I went back and I found a bunch of material um, that I had been given, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna get into some stuff about King Solomon too. Okay, yeah, that's. So I've, I've studied extensively on that subject. So what we're going to talk about today, there was a guy um, that I read about, and I, and I don't even remember exactly what it was on, but he had talked about being in a fight in a parking lot, and I think it was on Reddit or something, and he fell, and he hit his head, um, and so he ended up for like the next 11 years having headaches and these these weird, like he would have all these weird like episodes where he felt like he was going to go unconscious. And he got married, and he had a kid, and then he got ill, like sick, and he quit eating, and he got to where he was like just laying on the couch one day, and he was having one of his episodes where he felt ill, had a headache, and he started staring at this lamp. And then the reality hit him, the reality hit him that it wasn't real. What he was looking at was not real. And it began to blur and then it began to fade away and everything went fuzzy and began to like uh, vibrate or whatever. And he woke up and he was laying in that parking lot 11 years before where he'd hit his head. Oh, my God. The messed up thing was, though, that he, he had had a kid and, and a wife. And, and so he was just completely devastated. And, and uh, you live 11 years of your life and then you wake up and you're not mm -hmm. there. So he never did really figure out where... He was like, what was that? Was that an alternate version of him? And when he was, when, when he began to realize that everything was not correct, did he die in that reality and come back to ours? What really happened to that? Now, what was that? So that's one of the stories that I'm going to tell you. So we're going to talk about that one for a second here. I don't know what's going on with that, but I do know that, that that story really kind of shook me because I had heard a story similar to that from somebody years before. Now, when you get hit so hard that you get knocked into an, an alternate reality, that's crazy. I have not been knocked unconscious in any fights, but I did swallow a uh, now and later, now and later candy. Mm -hmm. And I was talking and we were joking and laughing and we weren't drinking or doing anything illegal. We were just hanging out watching uh, my friends were playing video games and I took a now and later and I swallowed it wrong mm -hmm. and it went into my throat and you like started I, choking? I started choking and I stood up and I couldn't. I was like pointing at my throat, grabbing my throat, and everybody's laughing and thinking that I'm playing around, goofing off. And yeah. next thing you know, I fall. By some miracle, I fell in between my my entertainment center and the coffee table and fell straight sideways, and I guess just fell straight down. Mm -hmm. And I went unconscious. And I guess when I landed, uh, I got squid and scorpion were there. And when I landed, the, the now and later just got spit out, mm -hmm. and, and they were like shaking me. And I just remember for a split second, I was like unconscious. Everything was was black. But then when I started to come to, I was like going through this weird like gray smoke rings. I don't know what that is. And I was like going toward like light or whatever. And then I woke up, 
And so I, I don't know what that was, you know. And, and then another time I was like, I had real bad anxiety and I was getting these uh, attacks where I would, you know, and at the same time I had developed a really bad cough. And so I was coughing one day and I coughed so hard that I went unconscious and fell forward under the coffee table. And at that same time, like I said, I was anxiety and I was taking this medication that I got off of. It was terrible. And I went unconscious and I remember having like this little mini dream and I thought that it was like, like a long time, you know, and then it, when I woke up, I was just right there. But in this little weird dream I had, like, it was just, it was like I was dreaming, yeah. you know, like you're in a dream or whatever. And I thought I was asleep for longer than I was, but it was very brief. And so it was just like those two experiences made me think, wow, that's, you know, who knows what happens, you know, when you get, I've had guys now being in the fight game for a long time. I fought a lot. I would train with guys and, and course i'm older so back in the day when ufc was starting out yeah it was starting out it was, it was no money in it mm -mm. i wasn't going to leave my job to go get punched and punch people because you know, there was no money and by the time that it Got was, was doing huge and making money i was out of shape and couldn't keep myself in past shape the prime <laughs> yeah not past the prime so much just out of shape and i couldn't stay in shape because i was you know just i lived an unhealthy lifestyle and i just i couldn't stay in shape i could fight you know quick fights you know do what beat up, beat up somebody but i couldn't stay in shape but Anyways, I knew a lot of guys in the fight game and a lot of people here in Austin, a lot of people around, you know, everywhere. I've met people from all over. And like I said, I've trained, I've done all kinds of different uh, stuff. And I've talked to many people who have been knocked out. And there was one guy in particular that told me a really crazy story. And I'll get into that. And then, but anyways, this first story we talked about, before we go any further, your thoughts on that, Sal? You know, the whole thing is... He gets knocked out, and then he goes unconscious, and then he goes through this life. 11 years. 11 years of a life. And he has all those memories from it, too. Exactly. And I funny you should mention that. I was listening to um, Corey Good. He's this guy on the UFO scene right now, and he's got a show with the, the other gentleman, David Wilcock. And they're working together, and they've got a big-time show on the Gaia app or Gaia.com. Gaia does all the, um, they, they do all of the new age stuff. And, and, and I was listening to this guy, long story short, he was talking about how he, from a young age, was recruited to, you know, by these, one of these alphabet agencies to be part of, you know, these, these covert ops that they do in regards to, um, you know, extraterrestrials, all this other stuff. And the key, the linchpin of his, his testimony eh, was that he was taken aboard a spacecraft and he served 20 years with them, but he was talking about the whole age regression. And he said he did it three times, this, this three, the 20 and back is what he calls it. And he did three of these tours of yeah, 20 Yeah, I think back. I heard that. And then, but and the, the age but they regressed aged, him. The age regressed him, and then he came back, and he was normal. Yeah. And, but he's and got course, 60 years of memory. Yeah, yeah. and and but a lot of those, um, um, for the average person that participant in this kind of thing, they also, you know, they, they induce the drugs to, quote, unquote, blank slate them mm -hmm. so they don't remember anything, and they, set, they insert them back to where they first picked them up, so to speak. You know, and, and I'm I'm I may not be doing it any justice on his story. So folks, you know, check out um Corey Good on, on you know, search him up on YouTube. He'll he'll explain his his you know, his experiences a lot better. But he talked about uh for himself, I will mention this, he talked about that um he got to the point where a lot of these drugs, in order to blank slate someone, quit working. And he mentioned that how memory, the brain, the memory is like a hard drive. He goes, but the consciousness above that is like the cloud. So if you don't blank out the cloud, it can still come back to that to to that hard drive. And it, it was really interesting what he said. Living that, and and of course, going back to the, talking about that gentleman with eleven years of his life, the wife, the child, the whole nine yards in that instant, and then he and he gets pulled back into his body, for lack of better words, when he has mm -hmm. that episode. Um, well, an another thing about that too, that was interesting was that that guy said that to this day, he, you know, and of course his story was about a year or two old, but he crystal was saying, clear. He, he was saying to him? this day, he had all the memories and he still saw in the corner of his eye, he would see his wife and child. So maybe he is, uh, dancing in between, uh, dimensions for lack of better words. He, he's able to, 
to look in there off the peripheral. I mean, it's 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 so it's so. I think I'd rather be dancing between dimensions than dancing in the streets with Mick Jagger and David Bowie, or getting knocked down <laughs> while that song is on. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, <laughs> then you get stuck in alternate reality with them two forever. <laughs> yeah, but that is I, I find it amazing though, and. and I imagine it would be very heart wrenching because you come back here and you mm-hmm. have eleven. How do, you, how do you you lost your child and your wife? Exactly. Like if I were to get you know something like that were to happen, it'd be like hell to me. And then I, no, I, I wake be. up in an, another point in time in my life. You know, it'd be like or basically you wake point. up in an earlier time in your life. Yeah. Like okay, let, like I wake up now and I just got I was choking on the now and later. Mm-hmm. It's as scary as heck to me. I wake up and that's where I'm at, and all this other stuff that happened since then. Right. The only upside to that was that I was pretty good shape, so I don't have to continue on this journey of trying to like, Correct. you know. I thought it was really interesting. And here's an aspect I just started thinking about is that he had those 11 years, came back. He, on a positive note, that could have, he could have taken it as, well, I remember my wife in this alternate reality, or, and I remember my child. So, well, you know, we take the steps. Well, let me find this woman mm-hmm. and we will have a child and so on and so forth. But then there's the negative side of it, which is you just lost two, well, he, he the, two actually, people you love the most he, in the world. From what I remember reading, if this is correct, and I know that my wife was the one that was reading it to me or something and I went back and reread it or something. But it's been a couple of years. I, from what I remember is that, and I've heard so many stories since then that it, I may be wrong, but uh, that mm-hmm. he could not find her in this reality. Oh, he was. Oh, yeah, wow, she didn't exist. Like her wow. name and all that was not. Yeah, the chain could, or, or mm-hmm. the I guess, for lack of better words, the chain was broken somewhere, so she never came to be. Yeah, maybe, or died as an infant. There's so many. Who there's knows some infinite, what happened? Yeah, it was an, another reality. Um, so here's another one for you. Uh, this guy was a football player, and I'm not gonna say where he was at he was playing college football got it okay, okay. And he got in practice and he got hit and he got and and th- this is because th- there was a um something that happened money wise with the school mm-hmm. and so they were paid because of it and someone hit him and two things were going on one was that he was like feeling ill before that which mm-hmm. is why he would led to him not you know and it was because it was really hot and they were practicing in the summer and wow. they were they were overheating. Wow. And so he ended up getting hit while he was in the process of wow. already being Three overheated. things. So, Feeling no. Yeah, that's Well no, crazy. that's not it's overheating, it's like heat stroke. No, no, it's true, but I'm saying it's Plus three, he got hit. Those three things. First he feels ill. And then it's hot out there and he's feeling, you know, he's, he's, he's got an early onset of a, of a heat injury, for lack of mm-hmm. better words. And then he gets his bell rung. So right yeah, because wow. he kind of fell. All he mm-hmm. remembers is like going up for a pass and then feeling weird and then coming down and then he gets smacked. Yeah. All and sure. he had already told the coaches that he wasn't feeling so good. And so there was something that ended up happening, but I'm not going to get into all that because mm-hmm. I, I don't know the ramifications of it. But so what I was told um, from this is a friend of a friend that I actually met through them and he told me this crazy story. He ended up, for lack of a better word, like dying, I guess. And out of body experience. Yeah, and he had an out of body experience. And then. He just remembers like like kind of everything went like like a flash of white, and then mm-hmm. he ended up waking up on the field, right? Okay, and he went about his life, you know. And for about four years, he would have these weird dreams, weird dreams, constantly having weird dreams, where he would be laying on a, on a bed like in in a hospital, and yes. people were coming in there. These women would come in there and talk to him, and they would take his vitals and all this stuff. And he would sometimes uh, like move or whatever, like they would wake, try to wake him up and then he would just roll over and try to like keep sleeping or whatever. Yes. It only happened when he was asleep. But then one day he was driving and he started to have that same feeling like, like something was not right Correct. while he was driving. And he mm-hmm. was like, I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm like, it's like I'm in a dream. And then he says he pulls over and he just goes to sleep. Like he just goes to sleep and then he wakes up and he's in the hospital room. And and he's con- he's fully conscious at this point, and he had been in a coma, oh, for four years, like he had been unconscious in a hospital room. Dead gum. So that is weird. Like, how do you explain that? He lived four years of his life, and he went back and tried to try to, you know, people that he had met and and interacted with, and they had no memory of like what he was talking about. Like he was living his life. He had vivid memories of an of an 
life in this alternate universe. Mm -hmm. Things went on. Now, in a coma for four years, and he has four years worth of memories mm -hmm. from this alternate, you know, it, that is really interesting because we the concept of the multiverse is very, very realistic. It's been scientifically, there's, by via theory, the science community agrees that it exists. Yeah. So. It's not a universe, it's a multiverse. Yes, you know? exactly. So the multiverse is out there. So there's many verses. And before Christians and Muslims and whoever else starts screaming that we're, we're trying to say that, 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 that there's a multiverse, and that, no, I still believe that God rules over this all. And I don't think that there's multi multiple gods. I think there's one God and the multiverse is below him. He controls mm -hmm. it all. I mean, it, it is his. To, to, but I do believe that there is something to that. And then, of course, there's in the string theory, there's nine dimensions to each uh, universe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're dealing with who knows what. I it mean, sounds very sounds you know nine nine dimensions, all this stuff in e in each universe, right, in right. each multiverse. Yeah, yeah. So you think about the tree of life and the whole deal with Norse mythology and how you know the nine realms and you know Odin oversees all that. It's really interesting. Okay, that we now have you all just said stuff. that. Now they're going to think that we're talking about Odin. No. Once again, it's before I get attacked, everybody, <laughs> calm down. Okay, Sal may be a pagan piece of crap. I am not. <laughs> I am not. Okay. No, I choose to be open minded of it all because I, I believe one thing. I believe one thing. God, God is omnipotent. Is, is omnipotent. He's all powerful. That's it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into the. You know, people start arguing. They'll start mailing, slamming me, and saying that I'm being <laughs> against God. Uh, shades of the Simon Young interview. I got attacked over and over again about that. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I do believe that there is multiple people. Oh, I, I, I I've had a dream one time, and I've had this dream a couple times because it recurred. Um, I've had dreams where I was someone else. I knew that I was me still as a soul, mm -hmm. but I was someone else. And, and I went through this whole process where I had these, like, it was like past lives or something. And then I just kept dreaming about these same people. And then I had this weird dream about... Uh, it was like an apo apocalyptic um, sort of reality from the past. I mean, uh, uh, from the future, I guess. And it was like me and friends of mine, but we were living in a uh, Mad Max sort of world. Oh, dystopian future. Dystopian, yeah. And I had this dream a, a few times, and it scared me because the person that I was in that reality was, was a horrible being. I, I don't want to be that person. It was just like, oh, my gosh. Um, it was kind of frightening. Um, the people that, that I saw that were with me, like my brother and a few of my friends that were there were also very, uh, Man, menacing and Max, they were, they Mad were bad, they were bad people, very bad people. They were not, um, good at all. And they were doing very self-serving things. It was like, if I would not have stopped years ago doing the things I was doing and then there was an apocalypse and then you just, beca you go from being like, you know, hey, it's a boss to being himself. like a warlord or something. Yes. And, and then this person had no morals no scruples yeah and i watched this person and it scared me i thought that this is a horrible nightmare somebody needs to kill this dude mm -hmm. <laughs> i just thought <laughs> man this is terrible but uh it's not who i am or who i be who i become in this world but that in that world that was wiped out i guess mm -hmm. and all that was left was the scraps of people but anyways um yeah so there's a lot of there's a lot to this whole alternate reality thing i mean it's pretty deep and and so that's what happened to this one guy uh that's his story he kept, you know, he kept taught, taught, make, make, you know, making sure that I understood that, that, you know, he had a life. It was real. Like this, he had yeah. a life and he told me about his girlfriend who he had met about a year or two after the uh, incident and she didn't exist. He's oh, never wow. been able to locate this person. Wow. Um, friends that he had dealt with and done things with, they had no memory of these things he had done. Uh, the doctors just chalked it up to you were in a coma and you were dreaming. This this is uh, this is this story is reminiscent of a lot of the, the the type of stuff that Philip K. Dick wrote about in his stories. Who's Many that? Philip K. Dick. You should uh, look him up. This gentleman um, wrote a lot of his stories, and they claimed, or he claimed, I don't know exactly. You'd have to read up on it, but. That involved alternate universes, a version of yourself here, and and it also involved with individuals from one universe crossing over to the other, and and, and not so much the body, but the the consciousness. Your consciousness from this universe goes into the consciousness of your body in this other universe. If you mm. exist, and if you don't exist, it falls into or it goes into a body that is very similar or 
That's not the right choice of words. I guess the choice of word would be, would be accommodating to your consciousness. It's really interesting. And um, look up Philip K. Dick, they, the uh, Hollywood crowd um, on Amazon Prime. Hollywood came up with a series of short stories. They were like little episode, one-hour episode shows. It was really interesting. But look it up. They I can't remember the title of that show. But it's really interesting. Because one person's living a life in this particular reality, but yet they truly live in the other alternate type reality. This is Shades of Philip K. Dick's. Really interesting. His his novels and stuff. Well, it sounds like it. Yeah, it's really interesting. And the whole life being lived in another reality is mind-boggling. Again, I don't get caught up in it as far as trying to figure out or tell myself that it's... that. You know, they couldn't happen because I believe wholeheartedly in the statement I said a few minutes ago. God is all powerful, all you know, omnipotent, if infinite, everything. He is the one, the source, the everything, the source to the multiverse. However many multiverses, however many dimensions, however, God is still the ultimate power that can make anything happen. He so deems or she so deems. It doesn't matter. So, if you start from that point, it makes it easier to try to make sense of things around you because we can't. As human beings, we, will, we don't have the gray matter to even fathom half of what God does and why he does it. One of the things that, that I've, I've um, researched, too, I've had people tell me that they've had encounters where they felt like they had been possessed temporarily or taken over or they had some sort of like channeling done. They they leave their body and they will go into this sort of like waiting area. And I had one guy say that he was looking at the wall and it looked like these octagonal geometric patterns. And I've had other people claim that they see things as like these weird squares, like like co very computerized. And I know that there is a code. Uh, I was listening to a a, a show and um, it's called Beyond the Veil. If yeah. Anybody ever want? I actually like that show. And I guess I can plug them a little bit here, but they're, they're a pretty good show if anybody wants to listen to it. I've heard a few episodes. I don't listen to much of it because I don't listen to many shows. I don't have time to, but I listened to a couple of them and they talked about the code. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a very deep, I can't even really begin to, to scratch the surface on what they were talking about. It was a deep uh, episode, but they were talking about a code where they found a code that everything relates to. Yes. Well, it's almost like we're computer generated. I mean, and of course- uh, The fractal holographic universe. Well, uh, the, 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 a lot of the uh, Buddhist shaman mm -hmm. and the Hindu uh, yogis, they believe that we're uh, living in a simulation of a simulation. Yeah, it could, it could very well be that. I've heard well them refer that. to it as that. It could so. very well be that because think about this. We've created a simulated world, a.k.a. The Sims. Well, so, so who, yeah, so somebody so, created our world and then that world, or a world, and then that world created our world. So I know that uh, Linda Moulton Howe talks about um, – she talks something about, and I don't like, there's people that'll not agree with her, or agree with her and don't judge me based on who I spoke about. Okay. Or any of these people we're talking about. Um, I, I've always listened to her work and never really had a problem with her, but some people Same do. Here. Some people yeah. think that they don't, they don't, that she's bad or something. I don't know. Anyways, I, I don't think she is, but that's my opinion. And I know that she talks about a simulate, a, a spot that was like a, a a gateway, like a gate, mm -hmm, a, portal. Um, a portal, yeah, so to speak, and that it was told to the people that was like in the in Peru, I believe, and they were told that it was like a gateway to a, to another reality, and it was our reality was created by their reality, and so the, their time is is only been forty years that our our reality has been a, a alive, but to us it's been millions, millions and millions, well, billions, yeah, yeah, and so. Yeah, so it's it's really weird. It's only been like she, the, 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 this guy went to this uh, portal in Peru, and he inter encountered this being from the other side of that portal, and he said that, he goes, your world was created as an experiment. This is what, I'm not saying I believe this, folks. I'm saying this is what We're, we're just told. telling you the story. Yeah, and that they had created our world um, experimentally, and it had only happened 40 years before. And I don't mean our world. I mean like our entire universe was was just a spinoff of theirs. And that their universe in turn was created by another universe that was doing the same thing. Think of like Rick and Morty when they do that. <laughs> I showed you the episode yeah. where they were going from within one world to another world to another world. 
and 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 when you die, you could just back up, back up into that, and it, and it could be to where you once all the versions of you are gone, then you ascend. Eventually, you go and back and you're to judged. the source. Yes, and maybe it's like a like some people some people say it's like a soul matrix mm-hmm. that there's like this whole matrix of soul of your all your different realities of you. And then, of course, you know, uh, some people believe that you reincarnate in this world and you just keep doing what you got to do until you get it right. And then you do a heaven or hell or you could spend time temporarily in a heaven or hell and then reincarnate to continue on. And then some people believe that you just get stuck in those heaven or hells for eternity, which is also. But then again, time being what it is, what is eternity to us is like not really that long. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be, you know, your um, your conscious mind may may feel that it is an eternity it may feel like it is being you know like whatever but that eventually you will move into another state or whatever and i and I think all that just depends on who you are what you believe and how you go about doing it you know if you are a good person that does right and you're right by god then i think that you do you move on and you do and you're rewarded in some form or another you go to somewhere good and if you don't do right by god and your fellow man animals whatever it may be your evil self will go to where you belong. Well, you, you've created, you've created your result, for lack of better words. Oh yeah, you you have no one to blame but yourself. Exactly, is pretty much it. exactly. And I, I'm of the belief too that ignorance is not an excuse for anything. I don't believe that at all. No, you so, you know you may you know I, I kind of not to <laughs> not to make this about anything a parenting show or anything. I always explain to my my youngest son when he was coming up. All my sons, you know, it was hey. You make a you make a mistake, and you didn't know the rules. Okay, I'll give you a slight about a hair of 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 uh, leeway, and I'll give you a little bit, but still, you should have thought through it before you made the decision. That means use your brain, think before you well, our do. Our justice right? system is very unforgiving in that way. Yes, and that's and that's what I try to tell him. I said because the real world, if you make the mistake, you've made the mistake. There's there's no ignorance, isn't it? It's not an excuse. You can't go back. And you say, can't go I back. I didn't know any better than to, to, to do so that. So you yeah. train them to think, and and so that's how it goes. But and here's a thought. Going back to what we were just talking about before, we kind of went off on this small tangent there, Wolf. Well, it's all relative. Yeah. Well, here's another relative thing for for folks, because there's probably a few people out there wondering right now, what do they mean? We're a uh, we're a simulation. We're not a simulation of a simulation of a simulation because we're here. I can feel my arms, legs. I said, you know, I say this because, and I'm paraphrasing slash quoting uh, Billy Carson in some of his talks that he's done. Think about this, folks. You've heard about the video uh, the video game The Sims. Mm-hmm. that's got its own world and everything. And you, if you put that program into your computer and you start playing that game, you're basically controlling, you know, what these people do and all this other stuff. I, I don't know the details involved with that game, but I know you get, you, you I had a buddy of mine that played it in the, many years in the, many years ago in the army, he played it and he said, yeah, you tell him you do, you make him do with this, this and that. And I thought about that when Billy Carson mentioned this, and I'm paraphrasing is he goes, imagine if we would put, you know, we would integrate an um, AI software into that game. Are they not sentient? Will they not be alive? Will they not wonder, Mm -hmm. you know, about God who created them and that kind of thing? So in fact, just just by technicality, if you go by, you know, and technically we would be gods. The creators of that game would be a god to them because they created them, you know, created their whole world, everything inside there. And of course, science has proven that AI or they agree, I don't know if they're hands down 100% proven, but they agree, most scientists agree, that AI is self-aware to a certain level. So this whole thing with the sentience or the sentience of, of an, an individual, and you talk about the you talk about the world's created, you know, the simulation, if you will, created from another one, from another one, that again is God in action. God, God well, enables us. God gives us the God gives us the 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 ability to think. We have to train it, but He gives us the ability to think. We have to train our minds. We have to do all this stuff in order to be to best to become the best version of ourselves at all time, and to let go of the petty stuff. You know. What do you think about this? We talk about the Mandela effect, okay, and yeah. and we still have not gotten off our lazy butts and done all the research because Tony and Anthony are lazy, and they won't do it for us. <laughs> Tony in particular is a very lazy human being and will not do the research. He just will flat out not do it. 
Um, and I have a million things going on every He's day. He's always so. on the couch eating bonbons and, playing, and drinking He's cherry looking at Coke. his phone right now and just being lazy, <laughs> lazy people. We're just Asians are usually very industrious, but this one is just broken. I don't know what his deal is. Like, <laughs> most of my Asian friends are like, "What? what's wrong with that guy? He's not like us. He's just, he's very, very, you know, like a spoiled American kid. I'm like, yeah, he is, dude. Uh, just kidding, man. That was no slide. A- Asians are very smart people, very smart mm-hmm. people. All my Asian friends are very good at uh, pretty much everything. But except for Tony, Tony's just, I don't know what happened. He's our technical director. He's got that going for him. He's not really, no, not really. He's uh, directing right now. Uh, well, he's looking at his phone. I think he's he, playing The Sims. He's, he could be. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this, though? We're, we're talking about the Mandela effect. Now, one thing that I think, this is one thing that I came up with. If you look at the map and how it's changed, and people are at home are probably going, like, what are you talking about? What What has happened is the countries are out of place continents are out of place and i don't care what anybody says you're not going to convince me that it isn't south america is way way over to the east now below us where as before it was right below us i remember that growing up as a kid i had to do a report where i had to learn all these countries and i had to do <clears throat> like i had to learn all you know and i remember it and it's indelibly burned into my mind that, that it was right below us well i know that when you when i listened to that linda moton howell interview one day she was talking about the uh, the different gates, portals around the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that I remember reading somewhere that one was in Australia. There was another one that was in uh, Peru. Mm-hmm. And now if you look at the map and how they've yeah, moved these, these places, mm-hmm. okay, if you took these continents and you moved them, now those portals are all underwater. You can't get to them now. Well, the so one in- that could be strategic too. Maybe the code that they use to write whatever, has they've, they've done that. Potentially. To, to to block us from being able to get to these places because they've moved everything. Potentially, that could that could very well. New that, Zealand is now, now. I remember it being in the Ring of Fire. It's not anymore, and it's like it's it's moved. There was a place uh, that was off to the left of Australia. If you watch the movie Gradazed and Confused, there's mm-hmm. there's the the globe on there, and the, and the, 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 the there's a little continent, little uh, you know landmass mm-hmm. next to Australia. Um, there's this little hook thingy looking thing at the top of Australia that I don't remember being there. <clears throat> I mean, it, it, it just looks completely weird. Australia is like right there next to Asia, which I remember it being the land down under because it was further down under. You know, it's it's totally bizarre looks, the way the map like it's looks. Closer to Asia now versus further yeah, away. Yeah, further f- closer. Yeah, and then yeah. of course Sicily looks like it's being like it's right next to Italy, whereas it was further and down below it. Yeah. Now it just looks like it's being kicked right there, and I don't. That's not how I remember it. I don't remember it. the African map looks different. I've been to some of those countries and it looks completely different. And I'm just going like, what is the deal with this? I've traveled a lot in my in my in my life. That's a lot of the stuff, believe it or not. That that, it, and we're not knocking people who believe in the flat Earth. You believe what you want. That's all I will say. I have my some of the questions they ask, such as uh, why do these land masses on the globe when you you know look smaller and or bigger, whatever the case may be, when you can go online and find out what the square mileage is for that country. And and one of the examples is Africa versus Europe. And, and I saw a short video on it, and I looked that up, and the landmass of Africa is huge. A lot of people do not know exactly how big, when you do the square mileage and compare it to all of Europe, Europe is dwarfed. It's a very tiny... <laughs> but if you look at a globe... You know, you look at a globe, and I, th- to me, that's just an optical illusion because it can also be said that, hey, guess what? These cartographers that are making these globes are just putting stuff together from old fo- uh, old photos that have been around for a long time, so they make their globes and use those as as the uh, <clears throat> simple patterns, and then make a globe, and, and it's not represented equally visually. If you if you look at it, it looks a certain way, but you have to you have to do the research and understand. Okay. This visual representation is not accurate in comparison to the actual well, square miles. Well, I'm of talking about countries. the way the shape of these countries is. Some of yeah, and, some and, of the, and, some and so, the South America thing. It, it is it is completely like I mean it is not even below us anymore. It is like way off to the kind of down into yeah. It's not even down below. Look at the map. Are you, oh, you talking you about know, South America? I'm talking or? about South America. I don't know what you're talking about. Like the cartographers, dude. Whatever. I'm talking about the freaking map, and I'm not talking about flat Earth or round Earth. I, I, I've I've heard both sides. Mm-hmm. I will say this: I'm not a flat Earther, and I'm mm-hmm. but I'm not 100 percent convinced that it's a globe either. I don't know, man. I've done a lot of research on that, and I, and I and I've talked to pilots, and they've 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 said, why do we? fly certain patterns zigzagging all over all the, the place time, and then yeah. they have these ridiculous excuses of course you can come up with a ridiculous excuse 
Like I punched a guy out downtown one time and gave the cops a ridiculous excuse and they bought it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if, if you if you'll buy it, I'll sell it. I mean, you know, there, there are people who make excuses for anything. You, and there's always an excuse, folks. Okay. It's whether you as yourself believe to be ignorant enough to buy these excuses. That's the key. And I'm not saying that I am a hundred percent on either side. I'm just not a hundred percent on the globe side. Like I used to be because there's too many things there's, you know, there's too many things that have happened People talking about the inner earth, and I've just ha I've, I've read too much. I've read too I much, and I've seen too earth. much. Oh, and I've and there's a guy that I talked to. My friend's dad worked at NASA years mm -hmm. ago. He 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 quit. He well, he, did, he almost retired. They started trying to screw him around. He quit. He said some very cryptic things to us when we were growing up, and I just thought, you know, like he claimed up and down that the moon landing wasn't the way that we. Th he never said it didn't happen. He just said it wasn't the way we thought it was. The story is not that way. Yeah, yeah. and I've there was a lot that. of weird things. There's a Stanley Kubrick interview where he's admitting that he's he faked it. Mm -hmm. Go find it. He's sitting there drinking scotch during the interview, and they're like, and people are like, "Well, he's drunk during the interview." I don't give a crap. I've been drunk, and I still remember doing stuff. Okay, I mean that that doesn't mean anything. I I just get people, you know are very ignorant and they'll buy anything. And if you, yeah. if you, like I said, if you'll buy it, we'll sell it. I mean, that's just human nature, but don't, don't come with your excuses to me. And I'm not talking about you, Sal, mm -hmm. but like the average person will give me an excuse. And I'm like, look, I'm not going to make a decision one way or the other about that until I got all the information. And I don't feel like I do. Mm -hmm. I have just read too many things. And, oh, no, and, I agree and, with you there. Yeah, I, I don't I mean, think we all don't have the whole, all of the information. No, not at all. I and, think that and, and that's part of the human experience yes. too. Though. And the and, and to go back to the example, you talked about the, the the moon landing, the Apollo moon landings. Many people say it never happened. We never went to the moon. We're stuck on this rock. I don't agree with that. I agree with I agree with that. We got to the moon. You believe but, that there was some alien base or yeah? There I, was, I totally don't believe that at all. See, I, mean, I believe that's I, your opinion. Yeah. And we're not going to allow it on this show, so no, no, yeah, screw you, Sal. I'm yeah. just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> no, bro. no, it's just, just simple. I'm just Go ahead. And I'm keeping it logical because we've we've got- Wait, well, wait. Hold on. Wait. Yeah, we got to keep it logical. You're keeping it logical. Yeah. You're saying that there was an alien base on the moon. No, 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 no. People no. are going to be like, that's not logical. <laughs> but I mean, you know- Why wouldn't it be logical? I didn't, wouldn't listen to what I said. People at home, some of them are going to say, how is that logical? To me and you- who believe in well, I, alternate realities, and I believe in extraterrestrial life and everything else. There has to be. I'm not going to say that that's not logical, mm -hmm. but I will say this, knowing what I know and speaking to the people that I've spoken to and reading what I've read, I saw on YouTube Buzz Aldrin literally tell a little girl that we did not go to the moon. Mm -hmm. And they made an excuse for that. Mm -hmm. Stanley Kubrick said he was involved in the faking mm -hmm. of that. No, they no, made no. an excuse for that. Everybody who's spoken out and said it was fake, my friend's dad said that. I mean, right. not not 100% that. I'm not right. going to say that. But he did say, he was, he's like, don't think it's the way they say it is because right. it's not. So right. no, no, I, I'm going to tell you right now, film, they make excuses for this. Every right, time right. somebody falls out with NASA and they tell somebody something. To discredit them. Yeah. You, you they discredit them. But right. I mean, what's going on? So here's the thing. Um. Being that the universe is so vast, this particular one we're in, it's so vast. To think that we're the only life here on this planet is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. To think, yeah, absolutely. To think that we don't have the capacity to get ourselves into outer space is also ridiculous. We go we to do. outer space. We just didn't go to the moon. Right. And, and, I'm given, and I'm giving us the benefit of the Why doubt. Why did we not go back there? Hence, I'd say we were met, i.e. we, meaning the astronauts, were met by... Advanced civilizations with a lot more technology. They told us to leave. Basically say, keep yeah. yourselves on the prison planet. And, yeah, I, and so can, when they get back here. I believe they're there. I let me, do let, believe let me, they're let there. Me finish but up, I don't though. think we ever got there. Well, I think we were told not to go there. Well, probably, and we, didn't. we probably were told before we even mm -hmm. tried to land, hey, get yourselves back onto the yeah, planet, maybe. right? I, don't, I just don't think we right. got there. One of the, what it, whatever it could be. But the point is, is that the ETs intervened right there to, to stop us, kind of like stopping a little kid from going outside of the gated yard mm -hmm. into the yeah. street. They stopped us to kept us in there and told us to go back in the house, right? You I go back. I think that we didn't even attempt it. I think it was fake to try to beat the Russians. I, I really been, do. I really do. We could have been behind. We could have been behind. But the point is, is that we've been up there and we've been basically told, get yourselves back in the house. And, and so to perpetrate the fraud, they said, create a movie. We, we've got to tell the people that we went there. It's kind of like you're told to go back inside the house. Oh, wait a minute. Nobody saw me. I'll go back and tell the rest of the kids in the house. I was outside. I walked on the sidewalk. I almost went into the street. So you believe that Buzz Lightyear and his, uh, what's his face? I'm, no, I'm no, sorry, no. Buzz Lightyear. Oh, my gosh. Buzz Aldrin. 
Sorry, folks. I was not disparaging him. I was mm-hmm. that was total accident. Mm-hmm. Buzz Aldrin and 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 all these other guys. You believe Neil Armstrong? They all went to the moon. You believe that they walked up on the moon? That one, I would say that I'm still on the fence about. And they're never happy about it because because they had to tell it like it really wasn't. Yeah, I think they, Buzz, had, they were told to lie. Not Buzz Aldrin, but Neil Armstrong. According to people who knew him and everything else, the guy was a man of impeccable integrity mm-hmm. and you can watch the interviews and and look at the look on his face throughout he's the interview. He's not happy. About it. No, he is not happy. He's being for forced he's to lie, folks. Thank you. I can tell you this. I, I don't know about the bases or whatever. I believe that you're probably correct about that. I just well, don't bases, I do not and I absolutely do not believe that we made it there. I just do not believe that. I think it's and I'm not going to get into conspiracy and all that yeah. because I'm on the fence. I'm on the I fence. Just, I just don't think it happened. I mean, I, my friend's dad when we were watching this moon landing show or whatever for school, he came in the room and said it's not the he way He was you the think nicest guy too. He was a big dude, a uh-huh. very big guy. And uh, he died several years ago, but he he came in the room and he was like we're not watching this. And then and and my friend's little brother was like, why not? And he goes, I already told you before. It's He's not, like, this is not something that you need to be. He goes, I, and then he went our, to our school, which was a private school, and said, our, my son is not participating in this project um, about the moon landing and all that. And, of course, it was a private school, like I said. And, and, and they were like, okay, fine. And I was on his team, so I didn't have to do it. So that was actually good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I always wondered what he meant by that. Like, it wasn't the way that they say it is. Well, what mm-hmm. does that mean? He didn't come out and say – you know, and it's always bothered me that he didn't come out and say to me, right. you know, of course, I'm a, I'm a nine year old kid. He didn't say, hey, guys, uh, we didn't go to the moon. He just said it is not the way you they say it is. So then you got Stanley Kubrick coming out and in and, and this, you know, in this video and it's him. He's sitting there oh, drinking I scotch agree. and he's I saying agree. that we didn't go. He faked it. No, I agree. The and it was, but, it, but it was strategic. It was because of the Cold War. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying they were right or wrong about doing that. I think that we had to do something to show the, the, to shut the, them the Soviets, the shut communists. Them, yeah. We had to show the communists up because the Soviets were evil, dude. I mean, they were very evil. And, and, we just and had Red the China Cuba- too. Red China was getting started. And, and we, we, had we had just to, had the Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuban Missile no, Crisis. And look, all that stuff that. was going on. Yeah. You know, so we had to do something, and I think that that's what they did. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you make mistakes, folks. I'm not judging the people that did it. I just know that I don't believe that it happened. But, you know, as far as alternate realities go, I mean, I don't know what's on the moon. That's it could true. be its own reality for all I know. It could be a reality TV show and they're videoing all of us. I don't yeah. know, but yeah. I just don't think that we ever got there. Now, as far as what you said, Sal, about people having uh, uh, been told not to, you know, I've the heard that before. Like they told them, you know, but I've also heard it another way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard it from some guy that was on the show. It might have been Coast to Coast. I don't know which one it was, but there was a show that I was listening to. And like I said, I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, when I used to sit post a lot in security, I used to listen to the shows at night, you know, but now I don't. So I don't really, I haven't kept up with it. It's been years. But this guy was saying that he was working uh, for, he was on some Air Force base and they basically told him the story and that they were told that they were going to try and do it. And they were told, no, don't even try it. So they had to fake it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they do go up in space, but they don't go to the moon. Exactly. And supposedly that there's something that has to do with they can't actually get to the moon. I mean, well, I think that we've ditched the space program for that reason, and I don't, I don't, I think it's really odd that we say we went to the moon, but then we never went back. I mean, I mean come on, dude. People to me that believe that now are just being naive. I really think yeah, that. Well, I mean, it's, come it's on, actually dude. why would they it. not go back? I mean, it's part of the mental programming and conditioning that we get through society slash culture. And it, going back, you know, to the analogy I gave you about the kid, you know, almost getting outside of the gate. You look at the story. Or, or were you, you look, one of those kids that they had to put on a leash because you were too hyper? No. My mother, no. My, <laughs> my, 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 my folks just put us outside in the yard and said, go play. Don't that's mess what up we, the house. That's what they did with us because yeah. we're tired of you being around Yeah, don't house, want yeah. you hanging around the house. Go outside and play. Yeah. But you're talking about the whole posturing because we were in the Cold War, so that's like having three kids cooped up in a house and one telling all the other ones, I'll do what I want. It's going to be my way. I can do anything I want. I can do this and that. And daring the other ones, you know, and basically telling them, I bet I walk out, you know, past the front the front gate and walk into the street and along the sidewalk whenever I want before you do. And then they get into that whole deal. And, of course, the one kid, us <laughs> Americans, get to the gate, almost get out. But then an adult comes in there and tells you, uh-uh-uh, get back in the house. Well, you know, that kid gets lucky. The other two were not 
really paying that close of attention what's going on. So he goes back in there and lies to him and said, says, hey, guess what? I did get out there. Check it out. You want to see? Look, my, my feet are muddy or my feet are black. And, and so he creates a diversion before going in, showing him that I got on that black top road out there. Look, my feet, bottom of my feet are black. And all the while... He did it right, you know, put so, some mud so, in there before that, before he walked in so and showed that, him. So that's, yeah. There's I, that. I, I can definitely agree to that. But the whole thing, as far as landing on the moon, yeah, I'm on the fence. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But the point is, I do I do agree. E.T. said, stop right there. I, get I, back. I can be on board with something like that. You know? I think there's a reason why, mm -hmm. you know, there is. And, and, but I just don't believe, you know, like I said, we're, we're not going to rehash it again. Yeah. But the so, film, I do agree with you. The film was created as, so, as, as a misdirection. What what we're talking about, you know, you know, as far as like the alternate reality is getting back mm -hmm. on topic. That was yeah. kind of on topic, off topic, I guess you say. We were kind of we, well. It we, is a form of a reality. It is. We're we're, we're looking at different things that, that you know, and and because we were talking about the Mandela effect, and I yeah. believe that there's something strategic to that too. There's a reason why my state looks weird now. Mm -hmm. uh, people like my my uh, guy that cuts my hair. He was talking about. Uh, um, Michigan looking weird to him, and my brother lived in Michigan for, for yeah. twenty years, and he's like, it looks weird. Yeah, it doesn't look correct. There's a lot of weird things going on here. Uh, people that are saying that their states look weird; they look different, and the, the things are not where they used to be. I don't remember Dallas being so close to Oklahoma. That's just me. But there are other people. But think who, about this too, uh, brother. Think about this too. Um, twenty, thirty years ago, you know, when we you kids and stuff, the those metropolitan areas were smaller. Now they've grown. So it yeah. appears on the map that they are closer to the Yeah, but I just don't line. remember it being like, the, I, I'm talking like I was in downtown Dallas and I went to uh, Durant. Yeah. I don't like, remember it being that close. Correct. I just remember Dallas being a good 30, 40 miles further mm -hmm. south, and it was a longer trip to Oklahoma, which I've traversed many times. Yeah. Well- Speaking of Oklahoma, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go into another direction. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna quit talking. <laughs> it's it's too mind boggling. It's too you mind boggling. Can... So so what we're gonna talk about now is there's a guy who I used to box with, mm -hmm. uh, good good boxer. Um, used to live in Oklahoma. Actually, he's from there. Um, and I boxed with him. And years ago, uh, we we were sparring, and he we 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 were talking, and he was telling me it was Golden Gloves, and he was telling me how he would get headaches, and that he had had. Uh, a car wreck. Right. He had gotten into a bad car wreck and uh, he lived here in Austin and he wrecked his car. And what ended up happening was for two years, literally two years, he kept, you know, having headaches and, and, yes. and then he started having seizures. Oh, wow. And during one of these seizures, this is really trippy. He said that he woke up from the seizure and it was like, he lived his life for like almost nine months. And then one day he had another seizure and he woke back up to where he was nine months previous. Oh man. Yeah. And so he was, he, and, and he was boxing and I was going like, how does that work? I mean, like, and he's like, well, that was years ago when I was, you know, he's not, he's not a young guy anymore. Right. But, but, but when we were young, he told me that and he was probably, uh, I'd say I was 16. He was 26. He's about 10 years old than me. I haven't talked to him much, uh, in a long time, but well, like I've seen him around, but you know, he had told me that, and he said he was having these seizures, but then he he, he started uh, taking medication, and then he started training. And so when he sparred, he would he would spar, but he would never go real hard. Mm -hmm. And he had never been knocked out in boxing, but whatever happened to him in the car accident had really you know, yeah. messed him up. And so he was living his life very gingerly, mm -hmm. and then he was one of those people that just said, to heck with it, I'm just going to live my life to the fullest, and he started boxing. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, dude, I mean, uh, he'd never been knocked out in boxing as far as I know, but because he didn't really, he didn't really fight. He would just train and he would, mm -hmm. he would spar. He was a sparring partner for people who were in golden gloves like me. Right. And he was a coach. Oh, nice. And so this guy basically was just like, you know, living his life to the fullest. But he did tell me, he said, head injuries are weird. And he was giving us a lecture about how weird it is when you get hit in the head too much. Yes. And how, and he gave us that as an example. That's how we got on that subject talking about his car wreck. And so, yeah, he had that car wreck, and that wasn't the end of it. There was something weird that happened beyond that, too. Like, he said that that nine-month thing had happened. Mm -hmm. But then after two years of this car wreck or whatever that had happened, he woke up one day, and he, his girlfriend at the time was in the car wreck with him. She had no recollection of the car wreck. But she had... She had According then in the car to wreck him, with yeah. him, yeah, and she was uninjured, but he he had hit his head on the windshield and was kind of jacked up, but she was like, "I don't remember that, like the car wreck." 
Yeah, and she then it was so weird. So I, I, I just haven't. I didn't really get. I was a, a kid when he told me the story. Yeah. So I didn't really get into like this deep detail about you know right. whatever. I didn't. But that was just very odd. That's you know it sounds interesting. Going to the point that you said about how the the brain and all this kind of stuff and how it works because you know it's a series of synapses firing and so on and so forth. But even then, we don't really know. We as a as as a race, if you will, a species, don't really know all the in, intricate details of the brain. No. To, Electrical and just, impulses. Yeah. yeah and I just mean. to give you an example that, that I was watching a show about people in special abilities. One that I think is really cool that people have, and it's, I don't know if it's a, I, I wouldn't call it a a negative ability, for lack of a better word, or, or a condition, a negative condition, is synesthesia. Mm-hmm. Right? It's basically people will see colors when they smell something. Yeah. That kind of thing. And they say, that's because the signals are crossed. I'm, I'm thinking Some people can see more colors than others, yeah, too. I that think too. that would be an awesome ability. But the uh, case in point I'm pointing at, or that I'm getting at, is that there was they, they interviewed a gentleman in the show, and they said, guess what? This guy had had some type of an, uh, 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 I think he bumped his head or something to the effect. But before that, he was just very normal. After he had bumped his head and he came out and he was in a coma for a little while and he came out this, this, and that, this guy had this urge to paint. And he started painting. And he, his paintings were, I, I wouldn't say they were Picassos think, or anything, I, I but they I were good. I think I saw something like that. Yeah, but yeah. Th- that's an example of what you said. The, you know, Going back to what you said about the brain, it's just so unpredictable, so weird because we don't really understand mm-hmm. it. And so this guy was painting and it just nonstop, he had this urge to always paint. And that's mm-hmm. what he, that he, that became his hobby. He used to do other things like go golf and things like that. But then once this happened to him, he came back painting all the time. So it's, yeah, the brain. You know, and what goes on up there, it's, 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 you know, being punchy. Well, Tony's stepdad, who's yeah. a good friend of mine, who I, that's how I, I met Tony when he was a little bitty kid. Mm-hmm. He's been my godson ever since. But uh, Tony, you know this story. He's told us, I'm not going to say his name because I don't have his permission. I mm-hmm. haven't asked him or whatever, but he's told us that he had an experience. He was in a car wreck as a child mm-hmm. and he was um, five or something like that or something, you know. And he has no recollection of anything up to that point, and that he has had dreams and visions over the years that he is that that he died as that child, and that he's someone else that that took that body. That's he's said that many times, yeah. And his mother, I'm good friends with her. Um, in fact, she may even listen to the show sometimes. But uh, his mother and me are very good friends. I, I visited them this summer when I was up in Oregon in La Grande, yes. and I went to visit them and. Uh, Spent some time talking to her. She's her and her her husband's a ex Vietnam vet, real cool guy, uh, Marine. You'd love him. He's great. <laughs> he's got his own bar uh, that he's built in his man cave in, in the garage. That's awesome. Pretty cool. He's got all these neons and all his old timey car. He's a restored car. Cool guy. Nice. Anyway, we're we're, we're sitting there and we're, we're talking about all this, and she's just like, you know, he's always been saying that he's, you know, and and she's like, if that's the case, where is my son? Like, where is the kid that I gave birth to? Here's the odd thing. Is that his hair color was was like really really blonde when mm-hmm. he was young? He had blonde hair and blue eyes, but after the wreck, his eye color changed darker, wow. and his hair color is darker. And now I've seen pictures. Now his eyes are green, but when you see these pictures of him, like that he showed me, it was weird. I mean, it was like wow, he looks different. I mean, it's like, and he 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 claims that that you know several years ago he claimed that he was having vi- dreams, you know. And and it, it was he was being shown how he ended up in that body, that he was put there, like he was put into there by these two entities. That's interesting. Not extraterrestrial, so to speak, but like you know, and up to a certain point, he's always been into like you know, studying you know esoteric things and things like that. But but he had never told me anything that that you know out there. But when he did tell me that, and I was just like, wow, that's incredible. So I guess he must have used the words entities because he couldn't really describe what they were. Oh, he said they were like demons. Is what he said, okay. and that he had been basically taken. And they weren't even from this realm; they were from another place altogether, like another reality. Wow! And is that not correct, Tony? Yeah, and that he was put into that body. They put him into that body. It's amazing, kind of like an imprisonment, you know. Wow. Now, here, here's the last thing I want to talk about before we get off the air, and this is this is very important. I wanted to talk to you about um, because it makes a lot of sense uh, in the way that these realities have been happening for a long time. There is a story about King Solomon, 
And King Solomon is, is one of those uh, just just really galvanizing figures that a lot of people, uh, the, the the Muslims and the Jews uh, and the Christians all know of him. And his they, exploits and all the things yeah, he did. Yeah, all the things that he did. And there's a ton of material out there that's been written about him. And some of it is just legends. And it's been written and rewritten, the Song of Solomon, the Key of Solomon. Uh, he's in the Bible in every version of it. He's in he's in the Jewish Bible. He's in the uh, the Deuteronomical books or whatever you call them. Yeah, and, Deuteronomy. Well, not do de- not necessarily. Is the Deuteronomical is a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to really get into yeah. exactly what but that go is. Ahead. I, I'm I'm following you. But there's a lot of legends about about um, King Solomon. One of the legends that I had that I had read years ago as a young man that really fascinated me. And now now folks, if I if I tell this version of it. Don't come back to me and go, oh, you didn't tell the story right. You should butcher your job. Okay, there's about 20 different versions to this story. Mm-hmm. I'll start from the beginning, okay? Now, follow me down the rabbit hole with this one. Uh, there was a servant of King Solomon. Uh, don't remember his name, but he was a he had a son, and Solomon was fond of this man and his son. He, they, they were his loyal servants, and this guy had been mm-hmm. working for him for years. And and the the kids the guy's son his kid was falling ill, he was on the verge of dying, and so he went to Solomon because of course God had granted Solomon all this wisdom. That's mm-hmm. the story. Yes, and that that he gave uh, Solomon a ring, right? Um. Well, anyway, what this is how that came to be. It turns out that he was told, I guess, by an angel that it was a vampiric demon named Orneus, and that Orneus was actually taking the blood, sucking the blood from the, the thumb of the child or something like that. While he slept? While he what? slept, yeah. He was like, he would like you know, or, or, or his toe or something. I don't remember how it went, but he was drinking his blood. Mm-hmm. And that that they went, that this man, his servant, went to Solomon and said, is there anything you can do for my son? I mean, he's on the verge of dying. He's, he's like, it sounded like symptoms of anemia, I guess, mm-hmm. you know. And so Solomon was given a ring uh, by God. According to the legends, now this ring had a seal on it, and a lot of people think it's a six-pointed star. But there, there's a lot of archaeological evidence that said that could not have possibly be because that star that they call the Star of David has not been around but since the 10th century, associated with Judaism. It was not around, so they, a lot of people believe it was the five-pointed star because they found Israel uh, uh, pottery and things from 400 years before Christ that mm-hmm. had that the the the, the, the star. five-pointed star. Okay, that's archaeological. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can look that up. Look it up on Wikipedia or whatever, you know, whatever. But anyway, this story, the story is that that uh he he had this ring. And so with this ring, he caught Orneus and and made him uh you know, he con- he controlled him. Yeah, basically he, he uh hemmed, arrested him for he life. He hemmed him words. up, yeah, and he <laughs> yeah. told him you need to go and and get your fellow demons and bring them to me. He brought the leaders. He he forced them to come, you know, to come back. You know, mm-hmm. like he compelled them with that ring. Right. And there was a leader amongst them named Asmodeus. Now he was a demon. Still, people to this day, I don't even like saying his name, but the the story is that he was the leader, one of the leaders or the leader at that time, mm-hmm. and he brought all of these devils and demons, whatever, to Solomon. Right. And that Solomon forced them to build the temple. Well, one of the things that happened was one night. When Solomon had been in, had this power for a while, you know, he got kind of sloppy. And uh, one of the legends is that he imbibed a little too much. And that, Orne- that uh, not Ornius, Asmodeus took advantage of it. Mm-hmm. He began to kind of pal around with him and became, they be- you know, he became too familiar with each other, yes. you know. And Solomon kind of forgot that this guy was a demon and an enemy yes. and not your friend. He was a demonic entity that was in bondage. Right. So he started to schmooze uh, Solomon. Solomon, yeah. yeah. And at first he was very uh, ornery and very uh, defiant, but he had to have him flogged and all these other things to make him, you know, you know be Bow, bend the knee, <laughs> bend the knee, basically, yeah. And so Asmodeus was a tricky trickster, yeah, like demonic Loki. entity, a very, very powerful demon. Yeah. Um, the leader in some of the stories, he's the leader at that time, which yeah. makes me wonder, like, what the heck, you know? So what ended up happening was uh, he tricked Solomon. Uh, Solomon and him got into a discussion and Asmodeus told him, you know, demons are without that ring, you know, we are way more powerful than you and we could destroy you. And I, and Solomon's like, really? He's like, he's like, I don't believe that. You know, if you, if you could have, you'd have done it. And he says, well, God protects you, you know? And he says, uh, he goes, give me that ring, you know, free me and give me the ring and I'll prove it to you. 
And so Solomon was drunk and cocky. He gave him the ring. Well, Asmodeus tosses it into the sea mm -hmm. and turns and then devours Solomon. He eats him, mm -hmm. literally. Then he regurgitates him, according to the story, and he, he throws him into the sea. That's one version. Now, there's another version that he was shipwrecked, okay? Because when uh, Asmodeus threw the ring into the ocean, that, that, in that version, Asmodeus flees. And so, uh, so he goes, uh, Solomon goes out there with his, what do you call it, retinue? Or what do you call it? Yeah, the boat. His, 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 yeah, a boat of people. Mm -hmm. And they go out there and they, they, they start diving to try and find it where he thinks it was. Mm -hmm. But then a storm came because the demons are freed now. Yeah. So they cr caused a storm and he wrecks. Well, either way, the story is that he ended up on a foreign shore. Uh, he was either spit up out by Asmodeus, who, according to the legend, his one wing could touch the ground and the other wing could touch heaven. Okay, so he was this humongous, big demon. Yeah. You know? So he's in, in his in his true form, not his yes. imprisoned form. Kind of like a surter in that, in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's huge. Yeah. He's well, anyway, huge. he spit yeah. this the, spit Solomon out, and Solomon ends up on a foreign shore. Well, these riders come up on him, sitting on the shore. You know, they got their spears out and they're like, who are you? They're speaking in this weird language. Solomon and them cannot communicate at first. Solomon gets imprisoned and eventually he, he has the power though. He's yeah. been given wisdom by God. So mm -hmm. he is able to learn their language quickly and he begins to tell them, I am mm -hmm. not from here. They figured that much, mm -hmm. you know, that his story is very interesting. They take him before the king. And he begins to tell this king these, these crazy stories about where he came from mm -hmm. and what happened, how he ended up there. I think that the king kind of thought it was like, oh, these are pretty cool fables that this guy's spitting, yeah. you know. He's this, a good storyteller. This weird foreigner. Yeah, he yeah. looked totally different than they did, dressed totally different than they did. So they thought, this guy is definitely unique. Mm -hmm. So he gives him a job as a cook, you know. Mm -hmm. And gradually, he finds favor with the king's daughter. Mm -hmm. And the king's daughter is whispering in the king's ear, and he gets elevated a little further. And then... He's still a commoner, but he has a unique ability. You know, mm -hmm. he can tell these stories and he can do these things that they, you know, um, some of the stories say that he could like, you know, foresee and foretell things or whatever. Right. Because he had this ultimate wisdom, you know, that he was given by God. So he finds favor with this king, but then he gets a little too cozy with the daughter and the king decides he doesn't want this guy around. Like so him, then yeah. they elope. So the, 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 the king goes after him to try to kill him. Mm -hmm. It's been seven years. And so, uh, he goes to sleep one night as a refugee, as a refugee, I guess, or as a, uh, a wanted man, whatever. Mm -hmm. He wakes up after seven years, and he's on the shore. And he walks toward the nearest city, and it turns out that he was back in a, in a land. He never where, really left. Yeah, he never really left. And his, his you know, of course, there's other versions. Some, one version is that he went back, and he ended up in the shore of Phoenicia, Right. Which is north of Israel at that time, and, and which mm -hmm. was is modern day Lebanon. Yes, and that they, they he was taken, and another one is that the Chaldeans found him and they brought him. Either way, there's several versions of the story, and no time had passed. That's crazy. And and then he was shown a map, and all these different versions. There's like this map that he was shown, and wherever he was at, he couldn't describe the, like like where he was from because the map looked totally different than what yeah. he knew. Well, that reminds me of the uh, story, and of course, so we can wrap it up. The story about the gentleman that uh, this was in the fifties, maybe, but the gentleman landed in Japan, and when he went in there to present, uh, you know, his passport, it's it it the passport was from a country that didn't exist. Oh yeah, and the yeah. gentleman was like, "No, this is where I'm Trying from." Trying to and, explain yeah. it, and they never could. Right, and he said, "Show, I'll show you where it's at on the map, so on and so forth." And they went through the rigmarole of trying to find this place. So they they held him in a hotel room, told him, "Don't go anywhere." Yeah, Stay but then here. he disappeared. Yeah, and then after they disappeared, this is you know, like I said, it's similar. But the thing, the the real thing is, is that a place you know couldn't find it on the map. And this whole thing with alternate realities is, you know, this place or the alternate universe, obviously in another universe, that particular country the gentleman flew in from exists. Our ex our reality, it does not. It does not exist. Speak. Yeah, so. it doesn't. So it's it's crazy. Well, well the, the story is, too, that Solomon was being judged for oh, his folly it. and that that was like his punishment was seven years of being um, held up, you know, for seven years. Here. Yeah. And it was all, well, I think that he actually suffered under, mm -hmm. um, that well, I think what it was is, is, is God was, was, was putting all those seven years of, of 
heartache, suffering, so to speak, to, to, to teach him a lesson in order to, you know, that, that brings. Yeah. Well, and one of the morals to the story is don't drink with your enemies. That's for sure. Yeah, that too. You know, but it was, it was a lesson from God to say, keep your wits about you. Yeah. And you're if you're dealing get, with demons and, you know, exactly. and I know that there were a lot of other things that Solomon could do, supposedly two of the angels of the fallen that mm -hmm. he was able to go and, and, and to cavort with them or converse with them. Yeah. And then they they would give him information, um, right? Yeah, and so they they were two of the fallen angels, not the rebellious angels that fell with Lucifer. Right. That's a totally different thing. That's a different faction. People, I'm gonna tell you something else. If all you're doing is reading the King James version too, you, and you're like, "This is the absolute truth," you're missing a lot of information. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. I went to a, 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 a studied the Bible extensively as as a child. I was I was made to. But there are so many books of the Bible that were taken out by the Catholic Church and that didn't even make it into the King James Version that you're missing a lot didn't, of didn't stuff. Didn't even make and, it into and, the first canonized version. Well, yeah, and Bible. you're actually just kind of like you're just you're just reading a hodgepodge of books that they decided were safe for Council us to of read. Council Nicaea, 325 AD. Cause rebellion mm -hmm. is what it is. Because even in the King James Version, it says rebellion is as witchcraft. Well, is that not a king saying, you know, that that's that that, that, that I know what reference they're trying to say. But it's also good that the king put it in there for him because it's like, oh, if you try to rebel, you uh, know, at all, you're just you're basically the devil. Goes back to what I said earlier, social programming. Yes, and Keep it starts way back then. And King James, of course, was not the the most righteous person. I can tell you that. So it's mm -hmm. really odd that we would even be Correct. following that particular Bible. Again. But I'm not saying that the King James version is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm saying expand I'm not saying that they're expanding it, you know, because yes, expand the King James version, I believe in that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more to it that's not that's not in that. And that and that's my problem. And then some of these diehard evangelical Christians, the, the Schofield Bible, of course, is that what they're, you know, that's what is what they're following. And they don't even know it. And there's been so much has been deleted and taken out and then rearranged. And they're like, oh, the word of God never changes. No, you're right about that. That's but true. man's interpretation of the word of God changes to, to suit man. Yes, it does. And you got to pray for discernment, but you know mm -hmm. you're doing yourself a, d a disservice if you're not reading other material to try to learn more about the world. Well, yeah, the Book of Enoch is to me essential. Mm -hmm. You got you got to learn about these things. Um, so, anyways, what happened was with Solomon, there was a whole another. Uh, somebody ended up fetching the ring. A diver they they recovered it, or a fisherman mm -hmm. dived and they found it. They saw something shining and they 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 brought it back to him. Mm -hmm. It's seven years was come and gone, but it was like he he was only out unconscious on the shore, temporarily. Right, um, so, so maybe what would have been a, maybe a day or so. Like a day, else. yeah, had passed, and so that that's a very strange story of missing time. You know, but it's, some versions had him in the land of the Ammonites, four hundred miles away, yeah. and that he actually ended up uh, just being returned after seven years. But then it turned out seven years had not really passed. I don't know. It's just it's just a very strange story, but I know that there's a lot to... It goes along to, with the theme we're talking about. Here. Yeah, and, and that's why I wanted to tell that story, because there there's more to this alternate reality. I could do another hour and a half, two hours yeah. on the show, but we, we're not going to do that today. But uh, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of weird stuff out there. And the unfortunate reality, brother, is Don't that, confine yourself to just one yes. source of whatever. Read, yeah. read, read, because I read, 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 you know, you know and that's how I learn... A lot of these things, I knew these stories because I've read them years before. When I was an, a youngster, I started reading. Um, first real piece of nonfiction that I read, I fell in love. It was just the, the fav my favorite thing after that. I read a book about Alexander the Great and um, was, was in a place where I could not – travel freely. <laughs> I was I was in a place where I had done something that the law deemed not not good and they put me in a place I was 14 mm. and they said you're going to be here for a time out. And so you're I had to be spending to do but a read. lot of time in your room. Yes, so you better basically read. in room yeah, I was on <laughs> I was on room lockdown so uh, a buddy of mine who's still a friend of mine to this day, we met there and and he gave me a book said read this, you know, and so I did. And so I started reading and reading became my passion to read uh nonfiction as you can attest to, yes, you look that's, around that's my library. That's what I read books. too. I read a lot of nonfiction, and this is actually half of my book. I read, I sold half my books to half price books. I never should have sold them. Think about it. If they're selling for half price, they're giving yeah. you nothing. So. Yeah, pretty much. But it, it's a cool store to browse. But anyway, I, I sold a bunch of my books because I just didn't have any room, uh, outgrown the room. But mm -hmm. uh, I had a huge library of books, and now you got digital. You can put all these digital, and then you got the audio book, mm -hmm. audible books, or whatever. But uh, that that's something that I think I should I encourage everyone to do. Okay, Expand like we started out the show, horizons. we started out talking about how to get your body and whatever it, to work your mind. Yeah, expand your horizons. Yeah, folks. read. 
I mean, these yeah. people nowadays don't want to read. That's get the problem. Outside, yeah, get outside your comfort zone a little bit because um, it, think of it in terms of if you go out into a field here in Texas, you're going to find a rattlesnake. It's not that hard. Oh, yeah. They're okay? everywhere. But let's think about it in terms of like this. You've heard about rattlesnakes. You've never been out in a field, but you've heard of rattlesnakes. You've never seen one. Wouldn't you want to know what a rattlesnake is all about if you're if you know you're going to end up walking out in that field one of these days? You know, it's better to be prepared than not to be prepared. And just because the the general public does not subscribe to reading or learning about these things that are outside of the parameter of what is considered normal, just because the general public doesn't like it doesn't mean that you need to follow along. Do you ha- if you feel it and you know it and you see the see the evidence before you, hey, check it out, read some more, find out more about it. The more informed you are, the better you are, or, or, excuse me, the higher the chances of you making the uh, a great decision versus a mediocre decision on something. Yeah, and and the younger generation is like just not really into reading. I can just I can tell you that. Sure. I would say there's not as many of them as there used to be. I think there's still some out there. My kids like to read. I but. spent a lot of time in the library as a young man and <laughs> as a as a child. I did, and I and I began to read nonfiction. And I never looked back. I never really went back to fiction. I don't, I can't, I cannot sit there and read a fiction book. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I just can't. I've tried reading all these and it just doesn't do it for me. I'll, I'll right. read once in a blue moon. I'll read uh, Neil Gammon. Like I'll read some of him. I read uh, the Graveyard Book. That's an awesome take on the Jungle Book. If, hey, if, if, you're, a ghost, <laughs> if you're a ghost fan and you like fiction, read the Graveyard Book. Yeah. You know, it's a very, very good story. My fiction, if I'm going to read any fiction... I go compl- guns and ammo. No, it goes way. <laughs> I, I, you know, I go all the way. I <laughs> total complete fiction that I read. You know, Marvel comics and and. Well, I, I think I, I put that in a different category. But it's still I'll fiction. read some of the uh, graphic novels, and mostly I collect them. But it's mostly like certain ones. I've read the, some of the classics, like Huck Finn them, and all though. that stuff. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, I did too when I was young in middle yeah. school. We had to read a lot. All of that them. stuff. Yeah. And, but like I said, once I started reading nonfiction, that was kind of it for me. Yeah. Um, I do, I do, or I don't now, but I used to collect graphic novels, but I don't, I don't really read much of them. I just keep them, you know? Yeah. And so that's pretty much all I did. But the Transformers was a big one for me. Yeah, there like you go. Transformers, those are cool. But that's, that's, I mean, that's to me, that is, if I'm going to, if you're going to see me read fiction, it's going to be the obvious stuff, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't like the I'm stuff I'm not into all that mid- fantastical, weird, like, I don't like werewolf or, or vampire books or anything I don't, like that. I don't care for those I either. don't like any kind of fictional, I don't like horror fiction. I'm just not, I'm not into it. I'm not saying it's, and I'm not knocking it either because my wife likes that kind of stuff and, mm-hmm. and my and my friends are into that and- I get people all the time trying to get me to read certain stuff, and I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm just, you know. If it's not, if it isn't nonfiction, to me, unfortunately, some people may disagree, others, wherever you may fall on on the spectrum, but it's a waste of time for me. And this yeah. is my own opinion you for have, me. Your time is invaluable. Yeah, my time, yeah. yeah. But that's how some people unwind, though. My that's old roommate true. was a really smart guy. And he would read those Dragonlance books. Like he loved them. Huh? And Scorpion, yeah. he reads the Star Wars books constantly. Yeah. I've read three or four of those. You know, like I said, once in a blue moon, I'll get a craving for something non or fictional. Versus. It has to be Star Wars. And then I, I really got into the Tolkien for a little bit, you know. Right. But, you know, th- th- then once, you know, you can only do so much. And then you're just like, well, yeah. that's it. You know, that's it. You know, and so, yeah. but I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't lay down, uh, lay, lay it down, you know, um, Game of Thrones was pretty cool. A lot of people are like, I've never seen Game of Thrones. Well, that's bad on you. You're missing out. It's a great show. They put it together really well. They did. I I, I listened to the books Except on for the audio. last season. Last season, in my opinion, was Last season was, was kind of weird. But it was I mean, lacking. I, I, li- I listened to the books on audio, mm-hmm. and that was easy because I could just listen nice. to them. Yeah. And I was also watching the show simultaneously. Just, oh, and it was so, just to see the differences? Well, it was kind of getting me confused because then I would... I would um, like be watching the show and be like, wait a minute, that, that character is like, oh, and that's the book. <laughs> and then I would get confused. I'd be listening to the book on post and then I would see the show, you know? Yeah. But, book uh, and screenplay, two was different the first things. nonfiction I'd really gotten into in a while, yeah. Yeah. since Lord of the Rings, probably. Yeah, that, yeah something that was fiction. But yeah. Man, we could continue on. <laughs> so, yeah, we could talk. Uh, but folks, we got to get out of here. It was good talking to y'all. And, and we will revisit this topic again. Yeah, they're, they're, we're, we're going to keep going date. with a lot of these things because we, we, we will probably be inundated with stories after this drops. Yes, well, we do want to hear uh, We've been wanting to talk about this. We still have other stuff coming up. Folks, tip, uh, um, if you don't mind, 
if you listen to the show regularly and you know there's certain topics, send us an email and, yeah. and suggest it. Because yes. you know, I was reading a suggestion the other day about alternate realities on my email, and I said, you know what, I'm going to do a show on that, and then uh, we're, we're going to do one on ghost vehicles. Yes. trains, planes, and automobiles that people see that disappear or yes. that, that, that come and go. Very weird. Kind of like alternate realities, too. And uh, once again, that email is doswolfman88 at gmail.com and wolfandsal at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Folks, like and subscribe. We got a bu- we got thousands of views on these videos and barely 3,500 3, 3, subscribers. Come At on, this man. point in time. We're thankful for everyone that has subscribed. Yeah. But hey, man, tell your friends. Tell all these people that like the paranormal the whole paranormal, they like, they don't just stick to one particular genre within the paranormal umbrella. Hey, bring them in, have a listen, because it's really a discussion. And this is one of those things that we're, while we discuss this, we're trying to help people expand their minds as well so that they, it helps them make sense of the world we live in. Yeah, which can be a confusing place. Yes, it, it can. Yeah. 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 And especially when you get hit in the head and then you wake up and you, four years is gone from your life. I mean, yeah. You feel like you, you, you stop and realize you never left, and then four years have gone, though. In your mind, it's there. You, you've you experienced it. So a lot of things like that, folks. And so with that being said, thank you guys for being with us. We'll see you all. Have a good one. Yep.